So the chemical engineering program at MIT is 125 years old today. It started in 1888. We are 35 faculty members. That gives us breadth and depth. Breadth in the sense that we can cover many different areas of the discipline, and depth in the sense that in those many different areas of the discipline, we have multiple people working in the area, which leads to good synergy within the department and also fits very nicely with the large multidisciplinary community at MIT. Most of us collaborate uh, with people outside the department and many of the people in the department are interested in materials research. One of the things that I love about our chemical engineering department is that it's so diverse. It actually includes a very broad range of areas and topics. We have everything from nanotubes to uh, biomedical applications to fluid flow and microfluidics for a range of reactor applications. And for that reason, we can actually address a very broad range of problems because we're such a broad department. In the Hammett Lab, we actually make a range of different nanomaterials, including material systems that can be used for energy applications and materials for biological applications, including biomedical material systems. We use a technique called electrostatic assembly to build material systems one nanoscale at a time. So we can actually take a material that is charged and allow it to absorb onto a surface, then absorb a material that is oppositely charged. We'll deposit these materials one after the other in a process that we call layer by layer. There are a number of practical applications of the work that we do. One example is that we have a project in the Institute for Soldier Nanotechnologies in which we actually coat uh, a bandage with a layer-by-layer -layer film or a sponge with a layer-by-layer -layer film that can actually stop bleeding. And in this, we're actually interested in addressing the soldier's need on the battlefield to prevent death. A large number of deaths that occur on the battlefield are due to loss of blood. A number of the new things that we're working on include our work directed toward ovarian cancer. And we've been using siRNA, uh, which can be used to turn genes off in cancer cells as a way to eliminate the many mechanisms that cancer cells have to avoid responding to chemotherapy. So we're hoping to be able to use this kind of approach in combination with chemo chemotherapy uh, to develop new therapeutics for ovarian cancer. What the Strano Research Group is focused on are what are called low-dimensional materials. So these are materials that are, that are patterned physically at, the, at nanometer dimensions. And what this does is it, it, it imparts them with new and unusual properties that we can apply to engineering problems. Good examples would, would, would be quantum dots, uh, carbon nanotubes, gra graphene. One, one of the most exciting things to come out of my lab recently is, is actually a, a near-infrared fluorescent tattoo that can actually respond to molecules like glucose or nitric oxide. And what you can do with this is you can um, imagine if people could actually put a, a, a fluorescent tattoo on their skin that will emit light proportional to the amount of glucose. Or, uh, this, could, this could be a, a, a passive, long-term uh, glucose sensor that, that, could, that could really help di diabetics manage their blood sugar uh, and also per, perhaps um, form a closed-loop system that could lead to what's called an artificial pan pancreas, where, where you could uh, administer insulin injections um, in, in, in response to, to glucose concentration. There's uh, dramatic potential here to, to, to make new, um, new measurement tools that are gonna, that are gonna change, cha change the, w the way we understand the human body. It's got applications to, uh, to di diabetes research, cancer, monitoring therapies, so, uh, so, and it's a, it's a very significant materials challenge. MIT is an incredibly special place because it brings people together from so many different parts of the world and so many different parts of the country. And the ability to have all of these great minds with so many different perspectives working together is incredible. The fact that you can come here and uh, feel that you can talk to just about anyone about just about anything is something that I think is very unique about MIT. Um, my experience here as an undergrad at MIT in the chemical engineering department has been really great. Um, the experience is very collaborative. MIT is very unique in terms of an undergraduate university in offering different research opportunities. It's really exciting to actually come in and be, being able to work with grad students and you know, help them with their projects. And then you know, once you've worked in the lab for a while, 
you kind of get your own projects. Everyone in the lab is really helpful and supportive. So for example, if I'm stuck, I can definitely go and talk to anyone in the lab and get their opinion on what I'm working on, if they think there is something else that should be done. People um, who want to test or who want to know their limits and who want to push themselves hard enough to the limits and they can redefine the limit and then push themselves harder and then redefine, you know, those kind of like self-motivated people who loves challenges they should come to MIT. I, I, could, I couldn't imagine myself going anywhere else. The quality of the faculty, the quality of the students, the quality of our postdocs make MIT a special place and make us stand out in the world.